you tell my bag for me, please, Mrs. Henderson? Mm, I have to kneel down, Wendy. There we are. Suits you this time. Thank you. Don't have your hair up. I hope it's going to stay up. These Victorian school moms used to pull their hair back and then knot it in a bun at the back. So you should look a bit older. Oh, uh, yes, I should think the headmaster was in his 50s. Uh, I'll have some more worry lines in a minute, please, Margot. Certainly. Trouble is, all these children all look so healthy and well-fed. <laughs> now, what am I going to do about you, Wendy? <laughs> I know, I'll give you some shadows underneath your eyes. Yeah. Oh, hello. We're going to do a little play for you today about Victorian times. Uh, roughly uh, 1880, when our school was built. Well, I think we ought to tell you how we came to write our play first. So, let's start with the school. When you stand on the balcony of the flats in the high street, you can see the rows of houses, small sheds, factories and chimneys, and then Peckham Park School. It's a good, solid building. With its new paint, it doesn't look nearly a hundred years old. Almost everywhere in London you see schools like this. They were built in Victorian times. Big, solid buildings, taller than the houses round about. Children from these houses in Friary Road probably went to Peckham Park when it was new. And children living in these older cottages opposite may have watched the builders at work on the school. And you can see that they meant the building to last, very solidly built in brick, yellow brick underneath the grime. There are three main floors with separate entrances. The infants had the ground floor, thought to be the safest, and shared the playground with the girls, who had the next floor up. The boys' entrance was in the other playground, probably so they didn't knock the infants over. There's a good bit of iron, iron railings and gates at Peckham. This was a feature of Victorian times. There were schools like Peckham Park, built all over London. Here's Hortensia Road School, Halstow Road School. The same solid brickwork, three main floors, gabled roofs. This school has its date in decorated stonework, 1896. And higher up, you can just see the stone badge each school had. Here's Peckham Park's stone badge or cartouche. Each school's was slightly different, but they all had L.S.B. It stood for London School Board. London School Board. Well, how was it that so many schools came to be built by the London School Board? Well, in 1870, the Education Act was passed. Now, this said that where there weren't any schools for children, the local London School Board should provide them. Didn't they go to school before that? Well, if their parents could afford it, they went to private schools. There were some church schools and ragged schools, but not very many. Well, it's exactly a hundred years ago this year that the London School Board started their work. And so you can imagine that there are plenty of books about it, with pictures in, showing us just what school life was like in the new schools. The classrooms were large, the lower part of the walls tiled. They were lit by gas, and they were in steps, so that the teacher could see who was misbehaving at the back. A great many children in each classroom, sitting up straight in rows. They have copied exactly what the teacher put on the blackboard. Do you see that in the ironwork of the desk, 
There is the LSB again. The London School Board teachers were very keen on PT. Plenty of exercises in the playground and school hall. Here are the girls exercising with clubs. It looks as if they kept all their clothes on, boots as well. When I take PE at Peckham Park today, it's quite different. The children find out for themselves how they can use their bodies climbing, twisting, swinging on the apparatus. Our apparatus is fixed to the wall. We pull it out and set it up when we need it and use benches and mats and the box as well. But if you notice, all this is in our old Victorian hall. But the tiles have been painted over and we have electricity of course. The tiles haven't been painted on the staircases yet. They're still dark brown and the original stone stairs are still there. They never seem to wear out. How many hundreds of feet have run down these stairs, I wonder, since the school was first built? Well, we tried to track down a few pairs of feet and we came across Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith is 85 years old and he's very kindly come along to the studio today to answer some of our questions. And we're going to tape record what he says. What was the headmaster like? Very nice gentleman. Very nice gentleman indeed. Were you ever punished? Big pardon? Were you ever punished? Oh yes, I was punished several times. I was punished because I would talk. That was my sin. I would talk in school. But uh, I couldn't help that. But I got punished for it and the punishment was that I used to have to write a hundred lines at the end of the school lesson, I used to have to write a hundred lines, I will not talk, I will not talk, I will not talk. And that was the punishment. But then when the, uh, I wouldn't pay any attention to that punishment, or probably done things worse, then I had to go in front of the headmaster and receive the cane from him. And you had to ask for the book and the cane. And he got the cane out of his side pockets and gave me so many handers according to the what he thought I deserved for, what, for, the, for the rug I'd done. <coughs> Are you glad you went to school? Very glad indeed. Very glad. I was glad I was able to go. My mother never went to school. My father never went to school. And I was glad that there was a compulsory education instituted in 19, 1870. And that Education Act made parents then send their children to school when they was at the age of five. Did you have school dinners? No school dinners at all. There was no such thing as school dinners. The first we had a school dinners was when I was about nine, my father died, and then my mother was left a widow, and there was, uh, we was on parish relief, which means to say this, that the parish used to provide you with so much bread, rice and meat each week. Well, that wasn't sufficient with the result that the teachers used to get a list of all those boys who had no fathers. And the teachers themselves provided about three days a week. They used to provide a dinner for the poor boys. One day we'd have rice and jam. The next day we'd have uh, soup and bread. And probably on another day we'd have a, a lovely stew. We used to have to take a, a, a plate, large plate, and a knife and fork to school and only those boys who were poor and had left their father and lost their fathers were allowed to take the school dinners. Now that was quite a voluntary part on the part of the teachers. They used to get the school keeper, used to do all the cooking, and probably a few tradesmen out outside the school used to give a few goods. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. That's very interesting for us. The headmasters like the one that Mr. Smith has been telling us about, used to keep very detailed records. And it's by looking at some of these records, these log books, that we've been able to discover what it must have been like to have been in a Victorian school. In these log books, the headmaster would record the absences, the visitors, and even the lessons. 
and very often the children were absent from school because they had to go to work. The work that the children did was as boot blacks, road sweepers, street sellers, and match sellers. And there's no doubt some of the children were very poor. Sometimes they couldn't come to school because they had no boots to wear. So now you know some of the things we had to find out about before we could write our play. And you must imagine now that this is Peckham Park School, just a few years before it was built. Well, Huggins, what is it? Please, sir, my mum said, can I bring the money tomorrow? Well, are you sure you'll have it all by then? Oh, yes, sir. My mum's going to the pawn shop and it'll be all right. I see. Well, let's have a look. Uh, Tom, Mary, Bill and John, yes. There's four of you at school last week. Tuppence each. That'll be aprons all together. You'll bring it without fail, will you? Six of sir. Joe ain't come to school this week because my mum's pulling his boots. I see. Uh, your father's off work, Tom, I believe. Yes, sir. He's bad with the rheumatics. Hmm. Well, you go home and you tell your, your mother not to worry, and I'll have a word with the, uh, the school board man and see if we can get some money while your father's off work. All right? Mind run along, Tom. Ah, Mrs. White, and where is Johnny? Oh, it's been real bad, Mr. Hawthorne. They took him to the fever hospital last night. It's scarlet fever, sir. Oh, I am sorry. Well, sit down, Mrs. White. Well, he'll be away from school for at least six weeks, won't he? And you mustn't send any of the other children to school, you know, because scarlet fever is very infectious. Yes, yeah, the doctor said it was very catching, sir. Mm. And now I've got to have the fumigating people in to do the hours. Yes, that's right. Get rid of all those germs. Now, now, you run along and don't worry. You go back to and look after the rest of your family. Well, scarlet fever. I'd rather have that than diphtheria or typhoid any day. Now, good day to you. Oh, Miss Reeves. Oh, uh, would you be able to see the Class 3 attendance winners now, Mr Hawthorne? Yes, Miss Reeves, bring them in. Come along in, children. Ah, Jane Moffat and Charlie Turner. Good. Uh, thank you, Miss Reeves. You may go back to your class. Now, let's see now. No absences at all last term. No lateness. And no misconduct. Excellent, both of you. Very well done, under very difficult circumstances. Well, I think you've both done very well. Jane, are you still working after school? Yes, sir. In the mornings, I go right down my lane, stepping. And after school, I look after the babies down our road while their mums go out <coughs> to work. Mm. And what about you, Charlie? I help me dad in the shop, sir. I chop the wood and I run the errands round to the houses to meet dad's customers, sir. Good. Well, mind you both get to bed early. Oh, you've done both splendidly. But you can't get your sums right if you're too tired to think, can you? Mr. Hawthorne, I'll come hang around here all this morning. I've got me certain you're smart for Friday. All right? Right, run along back to your classes. Thank, Thank you, sir. Now, all I want to say to you is this. You keep your Mr. Paxton away from our house. I don't want him poking his nose into our business. Sit down, Mr. Tappin. Hmm. Mr. Tappin, as you very well know, Mr. Paxman is only doing his duty. Well, your five children have not been to school for several weeks, and we haven't had a word from you to say why. Well, my oldest girl, she's, she's working in the feather trade, if you must know, in, in the curling room. And my two boys, they're, they're down at White's on the bottles. And then my youngest girl, of course, she's at home looking after the twins while the wife's down the soap factory, and she said, there you are. 
How much do your children earn, Mr. Tappin? Uh, about eight an hour. Mm. And how long do they work? About ten hours a day, mostly. Or... Mr. Tappin, do you have to send your children to work? Mr. Orkle, I can't keep a family on what I earn. If my kids don't work, they don't eat. People like us can't afford all this newfangled schooling, all these board schools springing up like mushrooms all over the place. I never had no schooling myself, and neither did my missus, and I don't hold with it. But your youngsters are such bright lads, Mr. Tappin. They were getting on so very well with their reading and writing. Well, what the flaming good of that? Of course they're bright kids. They're clever with their hands and their brains. So they're able to get on with their work cleverly, where they can earn something for it. Oh, all this newfangled schooling. I don't, I don't know with it, as I told you before. It gives idea, kids ideas above themselves. Well, Mr. Tappin, I really can't argue with you now. You know you're breaking the law by keeping your children away from school, and one day you'll live to regret it. Good day to you. It's a pity we couldn't go on and act out some of the lessons for you. But I hope we haven't given you the idea that only the Victorian schools are interesting. It's not so. All schools are interesting because they were built for certain people, in a certain place, at a certain time. Take some of these modern buildings. This one, built with different levels to be interesting for the children in the flats nearby. Here's another low-plan school, with plenty of space and freedom for the children cooped up in the tower blocks, which you can just see behind. I think the children at this school ought to ask the architect why he planned it this way. Mm. Yes, and they could do swaps, couldn't they? The uh, new schools go to old schools and vice versa. Mm, that would be a good idea. Well, you've all got school, so there's no excuse for any of you not starting straight away. Well, that's all for now. Goodbye. Goodbye. I get a funny feeling inside of me Just walking up and down Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner 